Happy Monday, everybody. Sarah Krajewski here, um, ready to meet you for another week of an Instagram Live where we connect and bridge the world of art education with um, educators and creatives and people who want to continue the conversation of being amazing artists um, and educators. So today we're going to talk with Sarah Walsh, who is an amazing illustrator, and she's going to be sharing how we can kind of um, make a little bit more space for fun, letting loose, uh, taking a little bit of that stress release a little bit and um, and kind of bringing on a little more of our own freedom and positivity and fun to our own creativity and to the world of education. So we'll be letting Sarah Walsh in here shortly. Um, but if you have any questions, feel free to drop them into the chat and I'll be sure to ask them to her. Um, and then also just remember to stay to the end of our conversation today. So hopefully you can win one of these exclusive Instagram live stickers. Um, and I will be asking a question, kind of a little trivia question to you about our conversation with Sarah Walsh. And um, if you get it right, I will send you a sticker. So hello everyone. Super psyched to see you. Sarah, I see you in the chat here and get her into the conversation right away. Y'all buckle up, it's gonna be good. Hello, Sarah. Hey, Sarah. Team Sarah, what's up? I know. <laughs> Two Sarahs, what are the odds? I know, it just, it's like our generation is all the Sarahs. I had like four Sarahs in my school growing up and now there's none. So, you know, it is what it is. Well, welcome, we're so excited to see you and thank you for joining us on a Monday. But <laughs> I'm super psyched to chat with you. So, can you give everybody just a little quick background about who you are, what you do? Just to give us an intro to you, Sarah. Yeah, sure. Um, wait, I'm like low here. Um, <laughs> Come on can in. You, can you hear me okay? Um, yes. I am an illustrator. Um, I've been making a living making art for about 20 years. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm old. Um, I freelance illustration right now. I run my own business. Um, we did have an Etsy shop. We had an online shop, but we are, we've temporarily closed it. Um, let's see. I do books. I do toothbrushes, <laughs> clothes, shoes, puzzles. I mean, I've done, you know, I've worked at Hallmark for the first part of that 20 years doing greeting cards. And then after that, just all over the place. So, um, I, I love it. I Honestly, I feel like, Sarah, your work is um, a great example to bring into the classroom to show students what it's like to be a working artist that works with clients that can still create their own things in their own style, but also yes. has a multitude of, of um, opportunities, right? Like I will walk into a local arts and crafts store and see like some of the pouches that you've designed through um, what are those recycled plastic pouches like? Okay. Um, yes. So like a lot of things that you can see Sarah's work, but it's like through different clients. And so that's a really fun way to show students how you can be a working artist. Oh, absolutely. It's yeah. amazing. Can yeah. you tell us a little bit about um, how, how your actual origin story came to be? Like, what did it look like for you um, growing up in, in arts? And then how did that transition into a career in art? Um, well, my mom was like a watercolor artist and did really good portraits. And I always drew like, like a lot of us just when I was little, that was all I did. Um, but I ended up going for just first I went for fine art, and it just was not jiving. And um, then I tried graphic design and the program at that school I was at just wasn't nothing was really driving. Um, I think I just had some things to sort out and then um, some family stuff. And then when I was a little older, um, I had become a parent and had to really kind of figure out my, my situation and um, decided to apply for this to this school that I wanted to go to initially, but my SAT scores weren't high enough. Um, I get it. <laughs> yeah. So I had to raise my average with this local, uh, like a two-year school. And then I applied and got in. And a lot of the teachers at this particular school, um, St. Rose, no one's ever heard of it, but they all went to Tyler, uh, which is a very, very famous design school in Philadelphia. And so it was like getting a Tyler education at this weird random, like 
school that used to be like a nunnery or something. I don't know, in upstate <laughs> New York. Um, Jimmy Fallon actually went there. Nice. But, but didn't graduate. And then he came back and like finished it and like spoke at the whatever it is. I don't know, the fancy college speech. I don't yeah. know, it's a long day. I don't know what words. <laughs> you're doing, listen, you're talking to a teacher that like zipped in the door and was like, I gotta go. And I just had a meeting. So like, you're in a safe space right now. We accept <laughs> and love people of all energy types, I hope. All right, good. <laughs> uh, yeah, so anyway, um, but what's interesting, I think, is um, that, you know, you think you need to do things a certain way. And that's just not always true and I thought I had to go for fine art I thought I didn't really know exactly like I didn't even know what graphic design was and then mm -hmm. I found out and it seemed like more of a viable income profession you know and, yeah. so, and then there wasn't an illustration major that I could go to at the school I had to stay local because I had to kind of rely on my family for childcare, and um so but what's cool is I ended up learning so much about topography and layout and color and shape that really informed my illustration style. And had I just gone right out the gate, like to find art or illustration, I think my art would be a lot different. Um, so I think, you know, for the bumpy path to people, like the bumps, the bumps are good. It's, you know, corny and cliche, but it's really true. Like you just, yeah. the, the straight and narrow path is usually one, boring. Yep. Um, two, you think you're on the right path and when you get there, you're not feeling it. So, you know, just embrace the bumps or whatever. But yeah, so it changed the way that I approached visual uh, solutions and my teachers always encouraged us in design school to solve the problem however you needed to. So mm -hmm. they were all about illustration because that's the heroes of their time. Uh, a designer named Paul Rand, who I love, he did that. Um, do you know color forms? I It rings a bell. Okay. Um, he did some logos that are just iconic and playful and childlike so it's like again like design doesn't have to be this snooty fancy you know visual art can just span it doesn't have to be siloed yeah so that's kind of how they taught us and it was such a great primer for me and i still to this day don't really feel like i fit into any one category of art. like i do so many children's books but I don't really fit into that typical children's book illustrator um, niche. I do product design. I, I don't know. I, I just like to try a lot of different things. So um, it's just kind of how I've always been. And sometimes it's messy and annoying and complicated, but I, I don't really know how other, I don't know how else to be. <laughs> So, I understand that. You're like, I don't know how to do this in an organized way. Yeah. I have to go like bounce all over the place. I just like right? to try different things, you know? And yeah. um, so, you know, I mean, I think you need to follow, people need to follow. Sorry, I'm, this is so shanty town. I had this because <laughs> I was charging it. Just too long. Okay, here we go. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Does that kind of, I, yes. I could go on and on. So just rein me in. Yes, no, I think that's good. I think it's important to, to hear somebody's kind of origin story and how, you know, we all learn and work and mm -hmm. make mistakes and have successes in different ways. And I think that's important too, to model for students. Like as an educator, I'm hearing you struggle. I'm hearing you oh, be successful. Okay. I'm hearing you like be confused on where you fit in. And yes. even still to this day, yes. you know, maybe like, where's my style? Can I be quirky, you know? And so I think that's, that's a nice thing and a reassuring thing to hear for our students and for other artists is mm -hmm. to remember that like, you, you, I know it's cliche again, but you kind of just got to be you and own it. And like, yeah, whatever you are, there'll be a spot for you somewhere or you yeah. can make that spot, you know? I mean, and some days are awesome. You just, it's like, I saw this quote the other day. It was talking about, you know, don't I'm going to completely butcher it, but it was something to the point of like, when you're feeling a mess and unsure, you know, that is the least amount, that is the day you do not size yourself up. You just, 
go to bed, you know, tomorrow's a new day, or you just, you just exist. And, you know, because I think as an artist, um, and I, I think I, I don't know this for sure, but I would put money on being like undiagnosed ADHD. Like I've probably had since I was a kid. And yeah. um, that was kind of something I came across this year, really started thinking about it hard. But I think all of those your personality, how you grew up, everything kind of dictates how you approach each day. Um, but, you know, as an adult, we have a chance to shape, you know, the company that we keep with ourselves. And I think to be, to be, an, uh, I don't want to use the word successful, but just to be a working, thriving, creative person, I think it's really important to just observe yourself almost like a scientist, you know? Yeah. What do you like? What do you, what makes your heart sing? Keeping track of those things, sketching little ideas if you have them so you don't forget, little things like that. Um, because when you get really busy, you kind of feel like, um, you know, we talked about the idea of talking about burnout in this talk and just, <laughs> it's like when you're really busy, like I know you get, it's like, you're like, I don't know who I am. I don't know what I like. I don't know yep. anything. And yep. so that's what I love about my sketchbooks and I have ongoing lists of, cause I can't hold it all in here. So I'll right. just, they're like little blankies. I go to them for comfort. I go, okay, here, this is who I am. I'm, this is what I want to focus on. And it's, they're really great reminders um, when you feel really lost because your day can get packed. It's insane. Social media, we have so many things coming at us. Just really important to have your comfort, your structured comfort go tos for when your things feel chaotic, which I just feel like oftentimes they do. So Yep, I completely agree. And I I love that analogy, like security blanket sketchbooks too. Kind of like it helps you when you're when you're stuck or when you're even when you're successful, you're like, Okay, cool, I feel confident in who I am and yeah. who I am specifically as an in um, you know, an artist, but how can that not also be helpful as an educator? Like a little spot to take note of like what lessons you think are really successful, what your students say. Like sometimes I'll jot down like silly quotes that my kids say that I'm like, oh, this is just funny. Like this is a fun thing that. that, you know, that like reminds you about who you are as an educator and what your students see you as too. So it's the good stuff. It's yeah. The and we lose them if we don't like harvest them properly because that's the stuff on um, like a hard day that you can kind of go to and it grounds you, I feel like. And and you can build on them to make things, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, you, you'll have all these quotes from your students, like there's so many things you could do with those, but you right. w wouldn't even have the opportunity if you didn't have the wherewithal to collect them. And that's beautiful. I mean, I get off on that kind of stuff. I just, yeah. I love that stuff. I mean, just as being a parent, I jot down little weird things that my son says or what my daughter has said when she was little um, because that's important to me. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. That's, it's all you're, good stuff. Yeah, you're kind of making space for it to live on past the moment too, mm -hmm. I think, which is helpful. And I think, um, you know, specifically this year, even after um, the chaos of, and, and successes of last year too, uh, I think there's a greater need for us to be even more so mindful in the moment of where we are with yeah, our students. Yeah. Um, you know, I was finding myself just, I woke up and I was sort of just like frustrated today and I was just annoyed. Like it happens. I don't know why. I was just like, I'm kind of annoyed. Like I yeah. you just figure it out on your own and me not need to help you, but it is what yeah. it is. Right. Yeah. yeah so yeah. I intentionally need to like take a step back and say, okay, oh, yeah. the kids can't control that I, that I feel frustrated today. Yes. So how can I be intentionally mindful to be there and to make a yes. moment with them where we are, right? Yeah. And I think that um, you talking about those sketchbooks and just like slowing down and kind of casually just being with yourself and knowing yourself makes it so that you can, can do that even a, a percentage better than maybe what, what was able to be done in the past. Yeah, I mean, for sure. I, I think just, I think just knowing, I mean, as a teacher, as a student, as a human, I, you know, it's taken me a long time. I've known this for a long time, but I feel like it's taking me a long time to actually live it. But um, I just think knowing yourself, 
well and knowing what uh, sitting in your feelings, knowing yourself, um, just I think it makes you a better artist, human, everything. And yeah. so um, like the keeping yourself good company, um, right. you, you don't have this issue. Well, you, I think working with children all day has a different set of issues, but when you're working alone all day, mm -hmm. um, same probably results, just frustration and weird, just feeling weird and mixed up. But yep. I'm reading this book, uh, or I just finished um, Bird by Bird by Anne Lamott, and it's a okay. writing memoir. It's an amazing book. I'm sure some of the people that follow you have either read it or know of it. Um, but she talks so much about keeping good company with yourself and having like a inner monologue that you're actually aware of mm. can really affect your mood um, and how you're approaching things like mm. frustrated with a student or whatever, frustrated with yourself and you're, you're working alone all day and you're just, you, by the, you know, two, three hours in, you're just in such a funk and you don't yep. really know why. And it's, it's like, well, if you, if you were spending that time with someone else and saying what was going on in your head out loud, they'd be yep. like, oh my God, I'm Whoa. getting this hell out of here. Right? And it really clicked for me how she defined it and the idea of like, am I in, even enjoying time with myself? Even if I'm working, mm. am, I, am I checking in with myself on my energy level with each task? Or like, do I need a break? Do I need to laugh? Do I, am I scrolling mindlessly? Yeah. Like treating myself as a friend. And I yes. guess it sounds like so basic. No, it's not weird but, at all. It's like very necessary. <laughs> but I don't know if, and a lot of people may already do this, but I don't think not everyone does. And I think it causes a lot of problems. And right. it's really helped me um, just kind of move through my day less frustrated because I'm, I'm not trying to power through. I'm like, Oh, I need a break. I'm going to take a walk. I feel funky or wow, this is really fun. I need to do more of this. Or, yes. Cause I think also your brain just generates thoughts. And that's the other thing I've been reading and hearing a lot on podcasts is like, we don't have to own every thought that comes out of our brain. Like it's job is to generate thoughts mm -hmm. and we can kind of let a lot of them like, Ooh, what was that? Okay. I'm just going to let that. But I think working on your, working alone, you just, um, I think artists struggle a lot with that. And with kids, you're just in reactionary mode all yeah. day. And that's, I, you know, I don't, I cannot speak to that. I don't know what that's like. I, I mean, being a parent, I know a little bit about it, but I only have one kid. <laughs> right, right. I know what, one kid. <laughs> and one, exhausting. Right, exactly. And one thing too that um, I remember when I was student teaching, you know, 11 years ago, my uh, cooperating teacher reminded me um, to intentionally find my connection to whether it be with myself or with other educators, um, artists, people that, you know, I love, because there is, even though I'm in a class of students, and I mean, other art educators tell me if you feel this too, but even though you're surrounded by students, it is still somehow very isolating because you're there's the not another adult, right? You're, right? you're like, you're alone in yeah. the way that like, okay, if I need to get this supply or I need to answer this question or something's chaotic, like you're doing it by yourself, That's even though true. you're surrounded by people. So it is, um, it is a different kind of isolation and mm. like self-regulation. And I'm hearing you talk about um, knowing yourself enough to see what you need and yeah. then being able to give yourself that if possible. Like, um, you know, <laughs> I, I, I admitted to y'all, I woke up and I was like in a funk feeling weird. And so I had my prep time and instead of prepping materials, I laid down in my back storage room and turned on a 90 second calm meditation. And I'm like, hope nobody walks in. Looks like I'm going to be taking a nap, <laughs> but I'm not. And I turned on like a 90 second meditation to like calm my anger. Like what's yeah. that about? But you gotta, you gotta well, regulate well. in whatever way you can, you yeah. know? That's really, really healthy. And um, I'm sure your students and you benefited from it. <laughs> I mean, Mondays are kind of hard sometimes. Yeah. Savings. Just so you know, I had a funky day too. It was a lot of putting out fires and hectic, weird client stuff. And I felt my 
my energy getting like really funky and a little weird i was like whoa (laughs) chill out it's not that serious i know (laughs) but then you just kind of step back and you realize okay i can just go and i can just hear the thought see it acknowledge it and then let it float away and it's okay well i also wanted to talk a little bit about um you know you and i had chatted for a little while before and i know that you have taken up some kind of interesting hobbies to sort of like when you feel like you need a break or to regulate i would like to hear about some of that or some of the other ways that um you can have sort of fun with your day and get yourself a little out of a funk if at all possible what does that look like to you um well I am so lucky in the sense that I share a studio with three other people and it's in a really great part of town in Kansas City where I can take a walk down the street and there's like a three-tier antique mall. There's coffee shops, there's restaurants, there's like little weird boutiques with weird tchotchke crystals and stuff. Like, I mean, I, I try to... I used to be really bad about just powering through and working, working, working. And I was like, man, this is not good. And the work suffers, everything suffers. So I just, sometimes I'll get out and take a walk. I'll go to the antique mall. I'll just look for weird stuff. Um, Mm -hmm. Just taking a walk, honestly, if you have a pet or take yourself for a walk, Mm -hmm. you just never know. I mean, I'll find something weird. I'll take a picture of it and go, I'm going to use that for something I've been working on. And then my thoughts will trail. And by the time I realize that, like, I'm not feeling the funky feeling anymore. Um, Mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing is just jarring, like activity, whatever that is. It can be painting nails, taking a shower, going for a run, reading a little bit of a book that you've been just, I think with the ADHD, I've heard the executive decision. Some people struggle with it. And that's what really clicked for me. Sure. Was like, I have a hard time, like, even though I know I should get up and like change the tune, I'm like, mm-hmm. now I got to sit in the funky tune <laughs> and I can't like, my brain's like, you need to get up. You need to take your butt out of the seat and go take yourself for a walk or do this or that. And I'm like, no, right. no, no. keep working. Five more minutes. Blah, blah. And then I'm just like, so funkified. So I've been trying to get better at just doing the things, keeping it light, keeping it moving. Mm-hmm. Um, and that really helps. Um, we, my family and I took up skating, roller skating in June. I'm a troll on wheels. I'm terrible. Okay. My Own husband, it. You are, you are the most magical being. <laughs> Not on wheels. <laughs> my husband is like an Olympian, like, like figure skater vibes. Um, he, I need to get him like some kind of sequence jumpsuit. Um, he's, uh, yeah. He's really good. My son is rollerblading and we just, we've been going to the skating rink. I just try to make little improvements and there's a space in our studio where I just, I can put them on and do little drills and practice a couple times a week. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that kind of helps, like just change it up. Um, It's all about the variety packs. Like every day, you need new variety packs. Right. You know, it's right. I don't know. And I know they, I know, like, again, we're kind of repeating things that I know people have heard before, too. But just the fact that, okay, so maybe you're, you're gonna be like, Sarah, and you're like, you know, what? I'd love to skate a little bit and like fall on my butt and like get some bruises for, you know, for skating. And it's gonna, I'm just gonna lean into it. But remembering that if you, if you try something, and then you fall off of it for a bit, and then you come back to it, like, all of those things are incredibly normal, and human, and healthy. And that's how we regulate um, as educators and as, as artists and as people, um, yeah. just trying to manage our way through our path of like pinging that's around, crazy. right? Baby steps all the way. I mean, that's the other thing. I think some people in the creative field or teaching, I think a lot of us are perfectionists mm-hmm. and it's like all or nothing. And right. you know, real change happens in like the tiniest steps for a long period of time mm-hmm. and I feel like that's just not how society has wired us and it's right. really unfortunate because it creates so much angst because we're seeing how things in the movies you know the movie montage it's a yeah example I mean don't you want to just fast forward progress 
you just, can I just do like a movie montage like right now and like <laughs> da, 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 showing the thumbs up sign, someone pointing at something and like, you know, it's just like moving, things are happening, progress, <laughs> okay, and then cut to the cool, shiny, perfect thing. It's like yeah. how it works. Right, obviously. So. Well, and like, naturally, we know that's not the case. No. And all, honestly, all the juicy good stuff is in the part that we skip right. in the montage anyways. I know, right? the ugly, gritty, dirty, yeah. I mean, and a lot of the time that therein lies the gem of mm -hmm. what we thought we were going to get with this finished shiny thing, so. Right, right. Yeah, uh, the, there's all, there's, we can crochet and knit so many little sayings on the wall and <laughs> cross-stitch. I mean, there's just a million <laughs> things regarding this, this situation, but yeah, I mean, yeah. it's really true. I mean, the, the roller skating, I think for me, I was like tired of being afraid with COVID. I think we're all mm. tired of being afraid. And sometimes with sports and physical things, I just feel like I always get hurt. Mm -hmm. And I just was like, oh, I'm old. I'm going to get hurt. I'm not doing that. Because it was starting to get like cool and trendy a while ago. And I was like, that would be really fun. I'll draw people skating. <laughs> But I probably won't hurt myself, right? Yeah, and then, because um, I love fashion, you know, any kind of, you know, I just love that stuff. So, but then when COVID happened, I was like, I'm really tired of being afraid. Mm -hmm. And then this amazing skate shop, uh, I, we discovered it. Some friends told us about it, uh, opened in Kansas City, like in 2019. And you can like go and they hook you up and it's like this powerhouse girl gang and they're all so cool and like fun graphics and art and I was just like all right I'll just I got it I'll just try it <laughs> and so yeah but I what I love about it is also the other thing I kind of still terrified but I think the other thing is like I kind of want to torture myself with doing something that I will maybe be terrible at forever yeah because it's it's like a grounding humbling thing mm. so and that's just kind of it's really hard to do for me I like yeah. want, you know we especially as you get older you're just like oh this isn't I tried it a couple times and it's not coming easy to me man yep. I don't yep. do it anymore. and I was like I'm gonna abuse myself <laughs> I'm gonna torture myself and just have I love that really you hard. shared this in our chat that's called making space for art and fun and you're like yes please <laughs> <laughs> but, I know I what you're, but I know what you're little. saying. It's like the challenge of it, but yes, yeah. also the torture. But like reminding yourself, like this is gonna suck, and it's probably gonna be hard for a while, or yes. maybe ever. Because goodness knows, like there's a bunch of I'm surrounded in my art studio, and there's stuff where I'm like, I I don't feel confident drawing like a funny cartoon, and I probably will never be like amazing at it. But I also hear in my artist brain, maybe like, okay, don't say that. Like you can try something and then maybe not yet. But like, yeah. that's the same with roller skating is yeah. like, maybe at some point, I've we'll made progress. There. Yeah, exactly. I've made progress and I'm, yes. I'm not giving up. So it's like, that's all I need. You know what I mean? So yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I want to talk just a little bit too about um, giving yourself permission to say no and to like stop doing things too, because I know there's a big, yes. uh, you know, pressure we put on ourselves again, as people no. who are typically like, go, 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 lots of deadlines, things that are due. Um, if you wouldn't mind using your example of like your shop or <laughs> um, telling us kind of what that felt like and how you got to the point of for your own self-regulation, stopping and not doing things. Yeah, um, you're way too good at this, by the way. Um, um, okay, so yeah, we, I just had always had an Etsy shop. You know, that was kind of my outlet when I was at Hallmark as an in-house designer and illustrator. I wanted a place that I could make my art and no one would tell me what to do, how to make it, how to tweak it. Just it was totally my personal expression. And it was so fun and it's been wonderful. And then when my husband and I were dating and then, you know, it was like a permanent thing. He's also an artist and mm -hmm. we just loved a lot of the same things. So we kind of joined forces and that's when it kind of evolved to this fun place called Tiger Sheep Friends. And then, so that went on for several years, about 10 years. And mm -hmm. 
um, as folks that have an Etsy shop know, when it gets really busy, you just kind of become a fulfillment center. And we tried having interns, we tried having employees, and they ended up just being our friends. Like, yeah. I mean, we would pay them and everything, but we just were never busy enough consistently. It just, and I, I think if I was interested in becoming this powerhouse boss beach and I was like, I want a shop and I want this and I want that, I would, you know, get to the next level with the people that we chose to employ. But I just, I know that's not what I want. So it kind of was like, I tried it and it made me realize like, I want to be creative. I want to be an artist. I like to keep it small. I like to keep it organic. And so that was a good decision and a good um, assessment. But then as things went on, I was wanting to grow in different directions and I wasn't ever having any time to yeah. do it. And so, but it was really hard to make a decision to shut tiger sheep down temporarily. I don't know what we're doing with it, but it was a decision. You know, I had a chat with a friend and she was like, you know, just put on vacation mode for a, a long time. Like you don't have to make this decision. You can yeah. not all or nothing. You can, it can be taking a nap. And so that really helped me, gave me permission to not have it be so dramatic in my mind of like, I'm killing this thing. Yeah. Like, you know, right. it's, put a little blanket on it, tuck it in, you know, I'm going to bring the blanket back in. It's just like, it's okay. And so that was good. And then because there was some things bubbling up, I wanted to work on bigger canvases. I wanted to kind of delve into this possible, like I considered like starting a new Instagram account with just my paintings. So I wanted mm -hmm. to get a little weirder because yeah. the children's books, sometimes I feel like even though my work is very personal, like my commercial work, I felt, found myself kind of feeling like I had to edit myself. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't really want to do that. I want to be, I want to explore and try really weird stuff if I want to. And because I have a lot of weird inside me, Sarah. Yeah, <laughs> like, I, we, I, I love that. <laughs> but like, I mean, really weird. And I yeah. don't want to feel like I have to contain it I want to I mean it's a little scary sometimes but you know so anyway I started this another another account called uh it's a kind of my exploration of the place between dreams between reality and and dreams fantasy just that kind of space in mm -hmm. between um that moment of time where something can happen that's magical but you're not sure you know Mm -hmm. I've just always been fascinated with the duality of that. So doing that, doing bigger paintings, and then we are, my husband and I are actually been wanting to try bigger murals for a long time, like going bigger and bigger. And so we're working with this local restaurant and we're working on a mural that is actually on ginormous wood panels that we actually built ourselves because we just couldn't cool. find any the size we wanted and so yeah we're trying that and I just don't think either two those two things would not have happened if we hadn't made the decision to shut the shop down and I would have been really cranky and bleh, you know I mean that's so, yeah that's you kind of need to like again coming back to that self-regulation is knowing yeah like I don't have the energy for this and is it feeling is it making your heart sing to pack orders maybe not right now and, the, and sometimes it can, and, and, and you have to kind of just basically know yourself enough to know, okay, it's, it can take a break. It can take yeah. a little nap and that's fine. Okay. Couple questions, logistical questions that I didn't want to forget to ask. Sure. First of all, previously you mentioned a book that you read. Can you tell us the name of that again, really quick? Yeah. It's Bird by Bird by Anne Lamott. And she's okay. got several books out. Um, and, um, yeah. So that's okay. Yeah. Bird by Bird by Anne Lamont. Okay, love mm -hmm. that. Um, so we can take a peek at that. And then are you willing to share your Instagram where you have the more kind of like dreamy, oh, yeah. magical stuff? What's that account? Um, that is dreamy underscore in between. Um, okay. I believe. <laughs> 
Grammy underscore. I'll I'll share it in the um the story, the art event story after yeah, this. Yeah. So if you're not yeah. already following Sarah, you'll obviously want to do that after this because her work is really fun and um I have a few prints up in my home and it's always just a, such a fun piece of work. But um but I also think you'll we can take a peek and we'll share um that account as well if y'all are interested in looking at that too. So um dreamy underscore in between. Perfect. Um okay, cool. So I know that um you were kind of sharing about how you have to say no to things, right? Yeah. Especially when we're trying to make room for fun and enjoyment. And yes, some things actually have to happen when we need to like, you know, do work, get paid, all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, if you but... have your limits, you, you say yes to too many things and then you're not accomplishing the things that you're really wanting to do. And, right. I, you know, it's hard. It's hard to, when you're used to doing things and, especially when you've invested time and energy, it's really hard to walk away from some things sometimes. And I know people have to make decisions like that all the time. It is not, it was not an easy decision. Yeah. And I think, I think part of it too is um, realizing and knowing that first of all, you're not the only one doing that too. I think again, going back to kind of how we talked about isolation and feeling, you know, you can feel really alone and have to be kind of comfortable with who you are as as a person when you're alone whether it's in a room full of young children or whether it's in a you know a studio space by yourself is is feeling comfortable with who you are and the decisions that you that you make to be okay with those um and and knowing that you, most likely you're a well-intentioned person who's trying to care for yourself and the people around you too yes yes, yes. so speaking of of well intentions um i have two more questions that i kind of want to wrap up our chat with and again y'all I, um, I'm going to share a bunch of Sarah's work after this. So if you're interested in uh, looking more at her work, sharing her work with your students, um, if you see any, like, again, you might see some of her things just out when you're shopping and it's really fun to be like, oh yeah, there's a person that made that, of course, right? <laughs> that's a, that's a fun connection. Um, but be sure to follow along in the story after this. And then our chat will also be saved to IGTV. So you can watch it as many times as you'd like, or share it with anyone else. But Two questions. I'll do the first one first. And I was curious if you could tell us, kind of wrapping up what we talked about today, um, how we could move forward into the future on a positive note, right? We were talking about um, making things fun, trying to regulate ourselves, but what like snippet of advice do you have for us as humans to move forward positively? Hmm. Well, I think deal with your emotions first and foremost because it's really hard to be positive if there's something in the way Ooh. and so i just i would say you know what i've learned for myself is the powering through doesn't work um be gentle with yourself if there's something that needs to be taken care of or something that needs some space for healing or just any kind of attention things that you need to sort out i would say start there if if that is in the way of your positivity, because mm -hmm. there's toxic positivity too. And that feels very, that just feels bad. And it yes. does not help. Um, so get your junk out of the way, <laughs> clear the air. And then I would say, um, I mean, I wrote some notes down. I feel like, um, For positive things, I just, it's so corny, but there's just a lot of inspiration everywhere. And I think it's hard to see that when something is in your way. I feel yeah. like when nothing is in my way and I'm like taking a deep breath and I'm saying to myself, wow, I am here today. I'm alive. Um, I just see things differently. I notice things that I would never have noticed if I was sad or funky or distracted by something playing or over and over, you know, preoccupied mind. Mm -hmm. um, not to keep referencing Anne Mama, but she, she talks about, I mean, I am a visual person. I love writing. I love words. I want to get better at writing. Um, so I like to read books about writing. And one of the things that I think any of us, no matter whether you want to be a writer, get better at writing, or just be a better version of yourself, 
I think um, she talks about the mind of a writer. You talk less, um, observe more, you're paying attention. And I think when we're paying attention, there's so many positive things to pluck from literally everywhere. Yeah. Um, I think when you're looking for negativity, you find it. And again, we have to deal with unpleasant things in life. And I of get course. that. We don't want to flip to the other side where we're not dealing with things and being toxic, toxic positivity. But I think when you're paying attention, that really takes care of so much because yeah. you just notice things that you would never notice. So a little cool bird or, oh my God, like, I didn't know, I didn't know that shop opened or, oh my God, it's my friend's birthday today. I'm going to text them and have a pleasant little correspondence. Or, um, I don't know, I notice yourself, check in with yourself. I feel like I have a little more energy than I did yesterday. That's good. Hey, just like little, yep. celebrating the tiniest things. Like another art, uh, artist that I really admire, her name is Ashley Longshore. Yep. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with her, but oh my God, she is incredible and has the most amazing pep talks with herself. Um, she talks about that kind of thing um, on um, Art for Your Ears, a podcast that I really love um, mm -hmm. by the blog. Uh, her name is Danielle, I'm gonna butcher her last name, Chrysart or whatever, okay. I think. But um, she just gives herself the most amazing pep talks, like, you got out of bed, good job. Um, <laughs> As Ashley does, you brush yeah. your teeth, you brush your te teeth like a champ, like just, the littlest things, even just hearing someone else just like clap and pat themselves on the back for the simplest things, mm -hmm. it like makes it like releases the stress in me. I'm like, I don't know. I brushed my teeth today. I got it going on. Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, pretty great. It gives me permission to do that for myself when I'm here. And she has this like amazing, like charming Southern accent. So she's I just. Love it so fun and so she's definitely one of my creative heroes and um I've definitely taken some notes from her um on like just positivity and um how to keep things moving and keep your energy up and so um so yeah I don't know that's perfect I like that. <laughs> that's amazing I feel like now I have to link to like Ashley's profile and like uh, like art for your ears you're giving us so many fun little like things to to like research and look into because I love new podcasts and new people. Yeah. So these Thank are all my blankies. These are yes, all that see? Yeah. yeah. And like but your blankets are different than mine because of right. how like and so let's share. <laughs> yeah. Under the same blanket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I told you it was gonna be a weird Monday, Sarah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm here for it. I'm here. Oh my gosh. Okay. So as we we're kind of on like the, the conversation of advice, um I know we talk with artists, we talk with art educators, we talk with people that have nothing to do with education on these Instagram lives. And um, recently we've been thinking about how we can share messages more with students themselves too from other uh, adults, right? So um, I'm gonna throw this one at you because I know that uh, maybe we're prepared for this one, but I was hoping you could share just a short message that you would like to give to young students. Anybody, you know, we teach kindergarten all the way up to, you know, college kids. What do you want to share with our artists of today and our students um, to try to encourage them? Oh, man. Ooh. <laughs> no pressure. Um, <laughs> I believe the children are future. No, um, I, that's just so loaded. As a parent, I um, do not take opportunities like this lightly. Um, I just... I do think kids are the future, honestly, though. No. Um, they're yes. important and teachers are so important. And um, I think what I would, what I would have loved to hear more as a kid is just, um, you know, be more kind to yourself and mm. um, you're getting to know who you are and you're growing into yourself. And that is very hard. It's really hard and I would just say go move through that with uh, a gentleness and a curiosity because 
like I said, it's really hard, but it's also super exciting. And um, if you are a young creative person, as I said in the beginning of the talk with Sarah, I would just really take getting to getting to know getting to know yourself seriously with like a fervor. Just write down things, write down your thoughts, write down your feelings. Keep track of things that you love. Spend time with people that lift you up, not bring you down. Um, I'm not sure what else. I mean, I could just go on and on, but. <laughs> well, we need all of it too. And admittedly, I'm selfishly like, yes, I'm listening for me, for sure. Cause like, it's not just for our students, but it's for, for us as adults too. But I think it's important to kind of um, know that our our students can probably handle more than, than we think, right? It's yeah. not just like, good luck, try being a human. It's like, let's talk about it and know no. that like, this is hard and yeah, you know? Yeah, I mean. We've all, we've all been through it in so, at some point and continue to. We have, to and I, I think, I think we can all, like I really am so against, I, as I get older, I love being friends with people of different ages. I really mm -hmm. don't like that mentality of like, I'm older than you, I know so much more. I mean, yes, wisdom comes with age, was age should be respected. There's definitely a pecking order and all that jazz. But on the flip side of that, you can learn so much from a young person. Yep. And they're in the thick of it. They're growing up in this world right now. We are not. And, and right. there's a lot to be said for that. They have a lot to offer regarding their perspective. And this generation is just like mind blowing. So, you know, I don't know. It really does blow my mind. Yeah. I feel like adults it would be good if they listened more to kids sometimes too. Yeah. I think yeah. would gain a lot. Yeah, I think I think we need to just um, take take a step back and realize too that that this is this is what it is, right? Part of my um, I did a meditation a couple weeks ago, and the mantra for that med meditation was right now it's like this, and I like that that is kind of like it is it is what it is sort of thing, right? <laughs> Which yeah. feels like acceptance in in all ways, but I I also <laughs> yeah I just love it too. It is what it is used to be one of my most unfavorite sayings. I, love it. I feel like it's a, like a resignation or an acceptance for a subpar. Cop situation. out. Mm -hmm. But now, after COVID, I feel like I'm like, I get it now. I yeah. get it. There's not a lot you can do. And sometimes you have to accept certain things to move on. I just want to say really quick, I, I realized I was telling like your audience who's mostly spending time with kids all day, listen to kids. They're like, screw you, Tara. <laughs> I, I meant more just um, because I know y'all have a lot of pressure on you with curriculum and so, so much you have to accomplish. Wasn't really speaking in that vein, more just people, adults in general in the world. I just, yeah. I think there's a sensitivity to children and they have such a unique perspective. That's kind of what I meant by that, just to clarify. We got it, we, we got it, don't worry. We, you know, it, it's, I understand, you're in a safe space, it's <laughs> just okay. To clarify. <laughs> just to Just to clarify, I love it, I love it. Um, okay, so after our chat today, like I said, I'm gonna be saving all of these, um, the things that Sarah had mentioned today, as well as sharing a little bit more about some other stuff if you wanna follow along. Um, but Sarah, do you have anything you wanna tell us about or any um, place else that you can tell us where to follow you um, so we can see more of what you're up to? I mean, I'm at Sarah Walsh Makes Things. I'm at Tiger Sheep underscore friends, which um, I guess I, I would like to say thank you to anyone who's ever supported Tiger Sheep over the years. Yeah that weird we need to post about where we're at and apologies for not really even addressing the radio silence. I'm just got like in social media fatigue and like, that's okay. I just needed to pump the brakes and just have it be that. Um, yep. So, but yeah, um, just thank you for everyone that tuned in today. So, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thanks for oh. having me. 
Of course. Thank you, Sarah. I appreciate you taking your time for sure. So we're going to end with a quick question to try to see if we can get somebody one of these super dope rainbow stickers. So um, if you know the answer to this question, go ahead and drop your response into the chat. And if you are the first person to respond, then you can message the Art of Ed on Instagram and just say, yo, I won the sticker today and send me your address and I'll drop it in the mail for you. So the question for today is, what scary hobby is Sarah Walsh attempting during quarantine? Or I don't know, are we still in quarantine? Yes, kind of, what's the world? <laughs> Sounds, sounds cooler. It does, know. quarantine. Um, again, what scary hobby is Sarah Walsh attempting and succeeding magically at? <laughs> Roller skating! Yeah. Thank you, Tribeco. You are my first one. Oh, the sister. That's my sister. She. Oh, <laughs> that's cool. I love it. Thanks, Lisa. Um, Y'all, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm going to be saving this to IDTV so you can share it with your friends. And feel free to check out any of the other um, chats that we've had. And next week, we will have Phil Hansen on um, to talk with us about um, his work. So we will be excited to chat then. Sarah, have an amazing Monday. Uh, Keep being exactly you. You are a rock star. And we're so happy that you got to join us today. Thanks, Sarah. Back at you. Hope tomorrow is less funky. I kind of have a feeling thank it you. will be. I think so too. <laughs> All right. Bye, friend. Bye.